I'm really happy to have Stuart Butterfield here. He's the co-founder of Flickr. I still remember when he showed me Flickr in the lobby of the uh, O'Reilly Emerging Technology Conference, uh, and that was a life-changing uh, uh, launch. Um, today, he's here to show us Slack, which is a, uh, a collaborative tool for us to use with our teams, and we're gonna see it right now. So who are you? I'm Stuart Butterfield. If you've heard of me before, it's because of Flickr. Um, I was told to speak about myself, though, so failed academic. I really wanted to be a philosophy professor, if you asked me, in 1995. And then I found out what a philosophy professor's life is like, and all my friends started working on dot-com stuff in the 98 uh, time frame. And, um, started doing web design professionally back then. Um, 2002, started a company called Ludicorp to make a web-based massively multiplayer game. That didn't work, so Flickr instead. Fast forward to 2009, we started with a group of the same people, another company to build a web-based massively multiplayer game, and it didn't work again, but Slack was the, uh, the save this time instead of... So how many times are you gonna try to make a massively I think that's, multiplayer uh, game? I'm, I'm uh, 41 years old now, and I think that's, I've done it enough now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but Slack's been pre working pretty well. Well, let's go into what Slack is. What is yeah, Slack? sure, so here's the background. When we were working on the game, there's four of us uh, starting the company, two in Vancouver, BC, one here in San Francisco, one in New York, and we use IRC to communicate, because that was the group yeah. chat platform that we knew. Yeah, our, our team actually uses uh, Skype, right? And yeah, just yeah. the chat. It, it's, it, the, the variety of tools that people are using is really interesting. But, so we use IRC, the fifth person we hired, they got on IRC, the 15th person, the 25th person, the 35th person, we actually got up to about 45 people. Um, and as a result of that, we didn't use email internally. That wasn't like a policy. We didn't prohibit it, but it's just we no, no one ever did, because the value of having all that communication centralized, having the archives available to new employees, making it searchable, and that's the other part of it. Um, we used plain vanilla IRC, which meant that if you sent me a message and I wasn't online to receive it, I wouldn't have seen it. So the first thing we did was build a bot that archived all the messages. Unless you scrolled up. No, no, I just wouldn't. Oh, you wouldn't it get wouldn't, any yeah, if, my, if my client wasn't connected at the time the message was sent, oh, they I wouldn't get have thrown away. Yeah. Wow. So we built Skype a, at least keeps a history so I can yeah, scroll can through back. the last week, you know, and just see what everybody was chatting about. But it's tiresome. It's, it's not optimal. Yeah. yeah. I and think we still, should get Slack going in our in our. Yeah, maybe you should. Team. Maybe you should. So we built hack on hack on hack on top of IRC. So first logging the messages, then searching them. There's no good iPhone clients. This is there might be now, I don't know, but yeah. back in, in 2009, 2010, there wasn't. So we built an HTML5 front end that we could use in mobile Safari to read the archives, but then we needed to be able to post from there too, so we built posting, and then we wanted announcements when someone uploaded something to the file server. And then database alerts and daily stats getting pumped in, and you know, over the years, of just all these kind of features accrued on top of it. When we decided to shut down the game, and that was in uh, November 2012, we realized that none of us would ever work without a system like this again, but this was kind of the hacky prototype. Um, we realized we should make this into a product. So we did. Uh, early 2013, we got started. Um, in August 2013, the last time I saw you, we did yeah. actually a, a interview people should check out because that was pretty good. Yeah, I did uh, that up at the GROW conference at, at the uh, new Vancouver Convention Center, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, You're always pitching me at conferences in the lobby. Yeah, <laughs> this is the first time I've I wouldn't say the first time I've seen you outside, the first time we've talked about something substantial outside of a little conference of a... Yep. So, um, in August we did this preview release. We had a, it was pretty successful in terms of the number of companies signing up. We really trickled them in over the next couple of months because you're trying, it's, it's a tricky thing. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of resistance, but also to get a group of people to change their behavior, especially around something as fundamental as communication, is pretty tricky. And, uh, we wanted to take our time to figure out what we could do and the new user experience and how we could explain the benefits and you know that kind of stuff. Let, so, let's see it so people have a context for what sure, the tool absolutely. does differently from IRC or Skype or you got uh, it. some of our dev team uses Google Hangouts in the morning to communicate. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, but most of the developers are all on, still on IRC, right? Yeah, yeah, the IRC is huge, especially in the open source developer community. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just go skipping here. I'm looking at, um, our 
uh, internal Slack instance. Right. And uh, oh, you got the GoPro scanning it. Yeah. You see that there's uh, tracking of unread messages up here. I can see how many read people are pasting in images because we're talking about UI design in this particular channel. Um, and I'm going to do a demo search. But I'm just going to reconnect to the to the TriCaster because I think it'll be a lot more effective. Okay, try try that and see. If You'll you see. Can. I bet you it's going to work. Everything always works eventually. Um, the idea is that you get all the... Yeah, there we go. yeah, if you're familiar with IRC, this is really simple. So the people who yeah. are listening to this who know IRC, there's a list of channels down the left side here. The ones that are bright white means that I have some unread messages. We don't show you the number because that's just going to stress you out. We will show you a number, though, if someone's mentioned your name or sends you a direct message because that means they want to get your attention. Got it. Um, we track that where you are, kind of like the way a Kindle does when you, when you change from your phone to the actual physical Kindle. It says you're on page number 197, you want to switch. We do that um, at the level of all of these individual conversations for everyone. So this is a competitor to maybe Yammer or Chatter now, right? Yeah, there's, well, it depends how fine-grained you get. You know, like for us, it's a, it's, or a we have like this super high resolution thing where because this is real time, it's, it's fairly different. Um, and there's some differences between them, but Yammer ends up a lot more like uh, Facebook for inside of a company. It's more about profiles and newsfeed rather than real-time conversations. Corey just posted this uh, mock-up of the um, the mobile um, design for the finish of the sign-up process, and so I can click on it and have a look um, and respond to him live. And that's not something that I mean that's something that you would do in a more asynchronous fashion with yeah. something like Yammer or Chatter. But this is live. This yeah. is like there's yeah. people working with you right now. Yeah. And you see it as a stream all the all day long. Yeah, and you have a bunch of streams. That's where the channels correspond to. Yeah. So we have one for bugs and one for all the people sending us tweets, and we have one for every ticket that gets created in Zendesk. And that's the other thing is um, Slack is designed to integrate with all these other services. So superficially, it looks like it's a messaging service, and it's something that you would slide in it as a replacement for IRC, um, or as a replacement for, you said, Skype chat, um, or as a replacement for hip chat, or something like that. Um, the, the direction that we're trying to go with this, though, is actually a little bit different. And messages are important for us because they're an important thing to index for search. Before you join Microsoft, um, you used Microsoft products. I'm just making this yeah. up, but I'm sure that all of them. No, I would say is true. Outlook, yeah. for yeah. instance. You yeah. use Outlook, and the people you worked with use other. You know, so obviously the Office Suite. Maybe someone, depending where you work, use MS Project. And at, for my company, we had MS Project wired to Outlook with VB Script to do tasks and stuff. And all of it worked together. And you can say what you like about whether it was good software or not. Um, it's definitely true that today there's a lot of better software than what we had 10, 15 years ago. Um, and it's also true that there's a lot of choices. So for every yeah. product category. Nah, I'd name, you know, name three choices, you know, uh, yeah. Yammer, Chatter, Convo, Podio, right? Yes, there's, yep, there's for been sure. a bunch of companies in the last seven years. A eight bunch years. of those, and but also the same thing's true for bug tracking, for project management, and for, for categories that didn't even exist 15 years ago, like That's application true. performance monitoring. Um, a lot of alerting, mobile crash reporting, um, a lot of business intelligence and marketing analytics stuff that didn't exist. So now, for every startup um, and, and big companies too, there's like maybe a half dozen or a dozen or, or 20 different services that you use to get your, your job done. And that, you know, like GitHub for your source control and Zendesk for support tickets and Jira for bugs. Or, and you know, again, many, many options there. So we, with 21 people on the team, send about 2,000 messages a day that are written by a human being and hit enter. There's also about 7,500 messages that come in a day from computers. So just yeah. like you get a lot of email from computers. You want, we, uh, no, like I that? just wondered, uh, it, like I'm on the marketing team, I don't want to see all the bugs that go to the development team. Right. right? So you just I say I'm not in that channel. I want to be able to pop in there and see bugs or report bugs, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get flooded with it. So you. It's almost like having separate uh, chat channels for each Yeah, it is. Other. I mean, they're literally channels. And we call them channels in deliberate homage to IRC. But also, and this may or may not be a good idea, but the idea of like a TV channel. You know, like you can be tuned into many of them at, at once, um, but there's just something on that channel. There's engineering talk on this channel. There's a, a suite of messages about um, 
code check-ins and deploys in this channel. On the other channel, there's a more philosophical discussion about product direction and new features you want to develop. And you know, yet another channel, um, there's mobile crash reports and whatever. So everyone in the company is in a different subset of all the all the channels. So let's say I want to use that with our little small social media team, mm -hmm. which is like, I don't know, 10, 15 people at this point. Um, how do I, uh, I I'm going to bring, bring this into Rackspace, so I download it. It, no, it's not a downloadable thing. There, it? There's um, uh, apps for iOS and for Android, and there's a Mac desktop app, but also um, just a web client. So you can just go okay. to the web page and, and type it in. So I start a Slack channel or two, one for maybe uh, you know, talking about what's going on on Twitter and one about you know, product feature requests you know, yeah. that we might want to give. Uh, do I add those people to to this group so they know about it? Or, yeah, or so do I mean, Rackspace just... is, is a pretty big company for us yeah. to have as a customer. We're well, it's just focused on my group 15. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's yeah. a, that's perfect because we're designed for teams, uh, yeah. and you guys are a team. And, the, and they're inside of plenty of big companies like um, Adobe and PayPal and Citrix and stuff like that. There's multiple teams using Slack that are, that are separate from each other. You would say, set up your team, say anyone with a Rackspace.com email address can sign up, assuming that's what you guys use for corporate email. Mm -hmm. You might tell them about it, you know, however you communicate with them now. Email or Yeah, and so they sign in, or... they can go just on the, on the web page. Um, they get a lot more value if they install the app as well. And then either you get to the point where when you're going to send someone a message, um, this is how you send it, or it fails. It's really kind of an all or nothing product is not going to work if half of the people are on it. Because like, you, then you get in the situation, you, got, you have something to say, you want people to see it, and you know that if you send them an email, they may be buried in other stuff, and they may not be responsive, but they will see your email that you sent them because yeah. it came from you. And that, but you've been growing 10 to 20% a week. So yeah. obviously somebody likes this, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely working. And um, yeah. it's interesting how fast we've been able to grow. Because this, it's actually, I did a, a, I made the graph and I mapped it onto to Flickr in the early days. And it's not really a fair comparison because there's so many fewer people on the internet. Yeah. But just in terms of the rate of growth, the percentage, like what the curve looks like, um, we're growing faster than Flickr ever did. Like at, yeah. no matter, even at the very fastest points. Um, but uh, you yeah, it's sort of expect. Sense. The expectations in this industry have changed because of Twitter and Facebook and yeah, Google Plus and LinkedIn. Totally. Right? We have the ability to tell a lot of people what we're seeing or experiencing. And so, you know, yeah, it's I not something you can by a tool and then I tell everybody all of a sudden, you know, uh, six million people potentially know about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like we hoped that that would happen. You can't bank on that. Yeah. Um, you know, try to design a product that makes people you know, moves them to exclaim, wow, this is pretty good. And, and this is the fundamental difference when you have Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. To me, especially Twitter. Yeah, I've been um, watching your tweets come in and people yeah, are loving it, right? Yeah, yeah, and it, that's happening all day, every day. If we, have a, we have a referral program. You get 100 bucks if, if someone signs up and they end up paying. They get $100 credit on their account when they sign up with your referral link. So that's, if you refer me, do I get, do yeah, you get I'll the give 100 bucks? I'll, I'll give you whatever credit <laughs> you are buying dinner tonight, then. <laughs> But I mean, that, and that's something that's been happening forever, right? Like businesses have been doing that for a long time. And if I know that if I was on the receiving end of that, yeah. I would think really hard about who I would send the email to. If it was if it was an email driven thing, if I had to put in someone else's email address, yeah. maybe I'd send it to one or two people if I thought it was really important and I had maybe already talked to them about it, and it was like it was okay to send the email. But no one has that kind of compunction about sending a tweet. You just like. You know, th we're using this. Yeah. It's working great. I'll tweet, and maybe three hundred people see that. Maybe eight thousand people see it. You know, in some cases, millions of people. In other cases, hundreds of thousands. And that's something that just didn't wasn't possible before. Like you could not have purchased that. You could not have made it happen. Know how? Like the, until there was at least Facebook, but at least you know all these people connected to each other. Even even in the early days of blogging, right? Like. Um, yeah. Let's stay stay focused on the tool. Yeah. What uh, what are you seeing people say? Why why are they tweeting about your tool? What what is it that it really changes about their lives? So where where Just we think um, the value is is bringing all this stuff together, which wasn't together before. That's why that's why I brought up all these different vendors. 
the side effect of that is your information gets siloed into all these different places. I say siloed, it's not anyone's fault. It's not malicious. It's, you know, uh, Zendesk doesn't have any interest in keeping support information away from Jira where your task management stuff is going on or, or Asana versus, you know, whatever. It doesn't, you know, everyone is just trying to provide the best service that they yeah. can. But then when you're trying to find a piece of information a couple of weeks later, um, it can be really tough. So I'm gonna, I made a Google Doc here. You're yeah. gonna think of a funny word and I'm gonna type it in. So you- A wanna, funny word. A funny word. Um, or the, even just a word or phrase. Flock, that Flock, right? Yeah, flock. <laughs> There's a good one. C-K. So I'm gonna take us back, and this is something that we did early on a lot, um, uh, is pass around, because we use Google Docs. Uh, here you can see all my, my personal Slack bot messages. Yep. Uh, and we paste a link to each other. Because like, hey, here I, I wrote this back, can you check it out? So if I hadn't ever done this before, um, Slack would prompt me, hey, do you want to author your Google account? I've already done all that. So yep. it just went and created a document inside of Slack. And this is pretty boring, because here's the doc. Yep. Um, and uh, I can type a comment in there, and I can star the file so that I can find it again later. If I click on it, it'll just open back up in Google Docs. But now here's the cool thing. I do a search for the word flock. Oops. Yep. Uh, and there it is. It finds that even though it's in the body of a, a document that's not even inside of Slack. So oh, that's, that's what cool. we're trying to do. So if I want to, you're talking about the, the tweets. If I were, search for the word awesome here and then say from Twitter, yep. um, I can find all these messages um, that were posted into Slack via the Twitter integration. Wow. Um, if I want to search our bugs for the word alignment, so every bug that's ever been created that mentions the word alignment, uh, you can see them here. We also, this is kind of weird for a lot of people, I bet, uh, but we use SVN for source control for the main application. Here's every SVN code check-in that mentioned the word alignment. Wow. So it's that's everything. Awesome. It's the tweets. It's every point of customer contact. It's every bit of like uh, planning that we do. So when how much does this cost per person? This is it's eight bucks per user per month or eighty per year, so six sixty seven per user per month. Do you have a month. free? Uh, we have yeah, it's totally free um, for unlimited users, unlimited time. But your message archive is limited to the most recent ten thousand messages, so the search will be constrained to that. So you can, basically, you can kick the tires for as long no, as you, you want. You learned a few tricks at Flickr. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's funny. <laughs> we were thinking about all, how we wanted to do it and all these different alternatives. And by the way, you know, I'm joking around. The, that Flickr the, Pro. That's if, if you don't if you if you don't pay for Flickr Pro, uh, it, the search. Yeah, I don't even. Work. Yeah, I don't think that's true anymore. Like that. But, oh, really? but that that's that was our plan back then, and that worked pretty well. Yeah. Um, and there's a limit on the number of integrations you can set up because we limit it to five, which sounds like maybe it's a lot, yeah. but you don't. People use so many services, so many, like you know. There's. Yeah. Um, I don't Do you know. have a good sense of what tooling people are using to build companies? Because um, of this? Well, you know, we have. Uh, I'm not sure if we should reveal it publicly, but we have a pretty good list of of the uh, I don't know several thousand teams that are using Slack at this point. We have fifty thousand daily users. Um, we have a list of all the integrations that they set up. If I go to one of these channels, um, like here's our QA channel, and I wanted to add a service to it, I would go click on the menu and then choose um, add a service integration. And these are the ones that we've built in. So AppSignal is metrics for Ruby apps. Um, Asana, obviously, you know. Yeah, we're actually them in a couple of weeks. OK, cool. Um, Bugsnag, Codeship, Crashlytics, which is a Twitter company, Dropbox, Google Drive, Hangouts. Help Scout, Jank. I mean, this is like this huge list of services that you can just press, uh, you know, a button, and and you get your messages from Stripe uh, for all your payment stuff flowing in there. You can see when you make a new sale. You can see when a credit card gets oh, declined cool. or whatever. Whatever. And these are just the ones that we built. There's another couple hundred that have built by the community. And obviously, this is really important to us. We're investing a lot in, in platform development. And it's like take whatever kind of objects the business has in a broad sense reduce them to lowest common denominator kind of message, just like you get an email about you have a new follower on Twitter or your, yeah. your check image is available for viewing or whatever. Um, put the link to the object in the message, put it into Slack, and now it's searchable. And all that stuff is searchable. So when you come to, you're doing a piece of writing, and you remember the stat that someone told you that was in an article that was sent to you three months ago, give up hope. Like you're never going to find it again because maybe it was an email or maybe it was, depending on what kind of tools you use. It could be in any one of a dozen different places. Yeah. Once you get this set up, and it's not it's not simple. I'm not, you know, it's not like just like in, install the app and you're done. Um, but once you get everything set up and the team is using it, everything 
everything is searchable. Everything is in one archive. All of like the knowledge of the company is available to every new employee you hire. And that's that's why people that's are really tweeting cool. about it. Is there a way but, to do private stuff? You know, if I, if I was working for you, yeah, I wanted so, to just talk to you and not everybody else. Yeah, there's um, there's uh, direct messages, kind of one to one. There's private groups, like so some you know for depending on what the nature of the company is, there may be compensation discussions by management during the annual review process, or, or something that's private or HR stuff. Um, it's I assume you uh, put a lot of security in this, so everything's encrypted. So if I'm sitting in a Starbucks and somebody's yes. slurping off all the Wi-Fi traffic there, they're not going to see anything. No, uh, every, everything is, is 100% SSL end to end. Um, yeah, and that's a, it's an interesting thing because you, you get a lot of feedback from people like, oh, I'll do this when I can host it in my own data center. And there's definitely some validity to that. It's a trade-off of convenience. And actually, we are planning to do a self-hosted version at some point that people can just install and, and use inside their firewall. It's, it's a lot of work, and the product needs to settle down before we can do that. Um, but you see this dynamic all over the place. Like, we should get you on OpenStack because that enables that. Yeah, like, and just, just to have it like a press button set up once, once we get to that point, for sure, because it'd be good for, for your customers as well. Um, but you see this all the time, where like the, the company has a policy that you can't do this, whatever this is, and that might be Google Docs, or it might be using Hangouts to talk to people, or uh, you can't use a hosted project management service like Asana or, or Trello or whatever. But people just do anyway, because the convenience factor is so high, and it's so important for them to, yep. for, in terms of productivity and getting their work done, that they'll just say, all right, well, that's the policy, and I'm not going to tell anyone that I'm doing this, but I'm doing it, and the work gets done. That's, I don't know where that shakes out, and I'm sure, like, I, I don't subscribe to CIO magazine or anything like that, but I'm sure that's an ongoing, serious It'll be yet another thing. excuse to fire somebody like me that you want to get rid of. <laughs> 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 but if they don't want to get rid of them, oh well. You know? <laughs> uh, you know, I bring my own iPhone to work, right? Why? Yeah. Because I want to pick my carrier, and I want to have the best tools. I, yeah. I don't want uh, definitely, you know, else to You remember early days of Twitter, some employee, um, got their personal Google account hacked, like the password got it. And they got into the Google Docs file for Twitter and all that stuff went up on TechCrunch. This is 2007, yeah. no, maybe later than that, 2008, whatever it was. And there's always the risk of that. And so I take that seriously, you know, so we have a policy internally, um, you better have a serious password. So I want everyone to use 1Password or LastPass or one of those services so they can actually have strong passwords. Yeah. We're working on two-factor auth I was just about that. to ask about that. Yeah. yeah. And also, and, and having administ giving administrators control over security policies like that, like a pin lock on the app on your phone in case you leave your phone at the bar, that the administrators can say, you have to use this or you have to use two-factor auth. It's funny, though. Cause, I mean, for me, I used Google Mail, Gmail personally. Maybe. If anyone ever got into that, you're fucked. I'm sorry. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that on the whatever. But you really, I mean, people, when people are in your email. They can do anything. You know, they can change your bank contact details and whatever. Um, not to mention anything that's personal or private that you're worried about um, the confidentiality of. But I mean, yeah. just really, people can just own you. Um, and uh, so, I, I, I live yeah. in fear of being hacked every day, and so I. And spend, you're a target. Compared, I'm a target, so yeah. I spend a lot of time, you know, um, making sure my passwords are long. They're mm -hmm. unique. There's no dictionary words. There's lots yeah. of characters in them. And they're all unique, so if you hack into one, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get them all, um, at least not easily. Uh, and I use two-factor on everything I can. Yeah. And, and, so this, and the funny thing is, I mean, so you're so you're I mean, on my, that. My this wife, I, I, how do you explain how to do that to a normal person who exactly. hasn't been hanging out with cool people like you or yeah. thinking about this? Well, and there's really even there's even people who understand this perfectly and still don't do it because they're lazy. And you can't say that they're stupid. And it's kind of the same dynamic as the big companies saying we have a policy that you can't do this because it's risky for us. And it's not a yeah. it's usually not a boneheaded policy. They don't make a policy because they're because they're stupid or conservative. I mean, they might be conservative anyway, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting they were totally yeah. off the topic. Of this. No, no, but it, 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 when you're working with people, this is stuff that you have to think about, you know. Yeah. Because you're passing around intellectual oh, yeah. property, you're you're uh, maybe talking about HR stuff that you don't. Oh yeah, absolutely. You want to be protected. You it's know. critical for us. I mean, and, yeah. and not to, so everything we do is in Slack. So if that someone got into that, we would be in big trouble. 
on the other hand, it's also would be a huge hit to our business if we ever got hacked. So we, the security is obviously very important to us. Speaking of that, I'm just going to plug randomly another startup called Hacker One, which is the people who ran the bug bounty program um, at Yahoo and, and, uh, and Facebook, mm -hmm. um, new startup. And they just run the bug bounty program for you. And there's all these people around the world who, not necessarily the, the best security experts, but there's enough of them. There's a crowd of them who will get, you know, for a $500 bounty for finding a low level bug, or a thousand, or two thousand, or five thousand dollar bounty for finding a serious bug, would just swarm your app. Um, so it's, it's like having um, a, like a, a suite of, of hackers all over the world. It, it can be inconvenient because sometimes they're a little bit, either they're not very good, uh, you know, some of them, uh, there's some noise there, but, uh, but it's actually, it's been great for us. We've been, uh, we found a lot of little, very subtle uh, bugs that way. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else I need to know about your tool or uh, the company you're building? Um, no, I mean, we, we covered it quite well. It's, it's really, it's an interesting project for me, like intellectually interesting, just because everyone is so different. Like oh, every human being is so different. Every team is like, it's a multiplier of all the individual. Yeah, here in this you know, room, I mean, you go and talk to the engineers, they're running very different teams and they want integrations that are very different than the sales team or the marketing team or yeah. the legal team, right? Yeah, so there's this, there's this conflict between trying to design like a simple product that people can just get into and something that does everything you want. Because once you're into it, then suddenly, you know, our team does whatever. Our team does whatever. And everyone has a very different way, style of working. Even just something that's uh, what would seem to be simple, like notifications when you get a new message. Um, I'm gonna, I'll close on this one. But. Yeah. So when we designed this, we very deliberately only wanted notifications when someone either mentioned your name because they want your attention or they sent you a direct message and that's we did that and we shipped it and everything works it's nice like you don't get a, you don't get the notification on your phone if you're on the desktop and all that stuff works and it was complicated to build and then people would say notifications are broken because what their expectation was like any messaging app they get a notification for every message otherwise they think it's not working and they're at the stage where they're just looking they're kind of kicking the tires on the product they don't know exactly how it's supposed to work but they see that they sent a message and the other person didn't get a notification so then we had to make the default that and then it's just layering on preference after preference after preference because everyone has their own way of working. They don't want to be interrupted. They want to be able yeah. to snooze notifications for a certain amount of time or not have them go off on weekends or whatever. Probably want to turn them off after 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. You know, yeah. so they're not getting beeped all night it's, long. It's, it's one of those things where it's, you know, the product seems simple. Um, yeah. And there's just, that's just one tiny aspect of you know, how deep it gets. Because communication is a really fundamental human, mm -hmm. human and messy problem. Is there problem. an Amber Alert uh, version where uh, the, my boss can wake me up to that? <laughs> yes, it, we haven't settled the, the do not disturb versus uh, the at everyone alert that goes out to the whole company. Yeah, uh, you better, your customers are in pain. You better wake up and get on the phones. Yeah. Know? Uh, that happens once in a while, at, at per, particularly at Rackspace, where if, if a data center goes down, it, it, all hands on deck. Yeah, right? for sure. Us too. So, cool. Yeah, and good cool. to see you again. It's really awesome. It's awesome to see uh, uh, this changing world of work, how people work together. Yeah. Uh, where do we learn more about it? Slack.com. And you're, tell me where, how you're funded also. Um, well, we started, like I said, this company two, five years ago. Um, Andreessen Horowitz, um, actually Ben and Mark, uh, Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz, before they started the firm, invested as angels, Excel, and they supported us all through this whole build up the game and then tear it down. Um, and that's a VC funded. Um, although, first month out of the gate after launching cash flow positive, I think we'll probably dip under for this month and maybe the month following, but then we're just going to be above. Uh, forever after because it's been the uptake has been phenomenal conversion has been phenomenal there's over 10,000 paying customers already that's that's awesome. six weeks after launch that's so awesome. it's, it's good all right Cole where do we get it again slack.com I should say that seven times slack.com s-l-a-c-k.com five letters English word easy to remember cool. thanks for coming in and showing <laughs> it to right. me thanks good to see you man and thanks for keeping showing me cool things at these weird conferences <laughs> yeah every every three four five years something like that Thank you.